Hey guys, welcome back to the Dreams That Today we are going to be canning some chicken. As you all know, we raise our own chickens. We do Cornish Cross broilers, and we are getting to the time of year where we have a flush of chickens that are a couple of weeks away from processing, which means we need to free up a little bit of space in the freezer from last year, and one of the best ways to do that is to can them. nice because in the freezer you can keep the chicken for a year or two uh, but in a can you know when you jar them up properly and they're sealed really good um, they're good in the jar for three years plus uh, I mean realistically speaking as long as nothing happens to damage that seal on the jar then you know they're good in there indefinitely really so um, yeah so it's a good way to to preserve your chicken without having to take up a ton of space in the freezer so it's also a good method if you don't have a lot of freezer space but you still want to raise your own meat birds and uh, you know you want to raise 25 or 30 of them or whatever then this is a perfect way to do it so today we are going to be canning nine whole chickens we're going to be processing them down butchering them out and then uh, canning them so <clears throat> in these quart jars we're going to be canning legs and thighs I like to keep the bones in on those we might throw a couple of wings in as well um, and then we're also going to be processing breasts we'll probably do that tomorrow okay so first thing we need to do is get these chickens all butchered down parted out so first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna pull the wings so I'm just gonna make some cuts on the backs right down to where that joint is and then come in from underneath and you fold that wing over and it comes right off. Now that the wings are off, we're actually gonna skin this bird because we don't can all the skin. It just kinda gets slimy and nasty. So that's a pretty easy process. Skin just rips right off of the whole bird. Sometimes it connects. Uh, has a little bit thicker connective tissue here on the breastbone, but you just run your finger through there and pull all that skin off. Also connects really hard on the back, which is fine. It's okay if we rip some of that. We actually aren't going to be using much of the meat there off the, off the back. Just pull it over the legs. There is the bulk of the skin. So now we're just going to remove these legs. So we're going to come in, we're going to make sure we get all of that meat there that's attached to the thigh from the back. And then you basically just rotate the pelvis over and it pops that joint right out. Done. Leg and thigh. Fold it over. Find that joint. Go right between the leg and thigh. The breast meat, we want to try and go as close to the breastbone as possible. You don't want to lose any of that meat. You can also process your birds. Some of our birds we process um, when we butcher them. When we initially do our slaughter, we process all the meat off the bird like this uh, without gutting the bird. And so that can be a good way to process the bird as well. If you know that you're just going to part the bird out and can it or part the bird out and package it individually then we have our cleaned carcass there's a little bit of meat left on here that we can pull off and put in with our uh, 
uh, with our breast meat when we go through and process that. So we'll get rid of some of the fat on this and get some of that meat off of there. Now we'll just get the rest of the skin off these legs and then move on to the next part. All right, now we have all of our meat processed out. We have a giant bowl of boneless meat, mostly white meat. Um, we have a giant bowl of legs and thighs, and then we have a bowl of wings. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate these legs and thighs and then put them into one quart mason jars. Um, so to separate these guys, what we're also gonna do is clean some of this fat off. But to separate them, uh, it's pretty simple actually. There's a, a little vein that goes through uh, like a little fat vein that goes between the drumstick and the thigh. You're just going to follow along that little fat vein and cut down in, <clears throat> separating the two, and you'll feel there's a little joint at the end of that fat vein, and that's the knuckle that we're going to be cutting through. And there's also a bunch of fat on this, so I'm going to trim that while I'm here. Get rid of that. Oh, chickens. Cut down in around that joint there. Crack it open <clears throat> and separate. Pretty simple. All right, now to put these, put these guys in, I'm putting meaty side down and then they'll just kind of mingle it there and we'll put the thighs on top. Mingle it. Mingle it. Mingle it. You see the definition. Legs mingling in a jar. Yeah. Is that mingle it? Actually what it, what it says. All right, so there you go. Three legs, three thighs in one jar. We're gonna do that until we have our jars filled. The uh, canner that we are using fits seven quarts at one time, so uh, we'll see we'll see how many these take up if we can keep at it with with this amount and we should be able to fit them all and I like to you leave the uh, the bones in when I'm doing the legs and thighs because you end up with all that bone broth in there so when you crack this open for a quick easy meal you get all the perks and benefits of slow cooking <clears throat> or cooking a whole carcass without having to take up all that time on the fly. Kitty cat is interested in what's going on, but also pissed for some reason. Oh, who was daddy got? Was that chicken? That one's only got two thighs in it. Yeah. Daddy's doing chicken, I'm making dinner. What are you doing? Yeah. Causing a ruckus. Being a freaking teenager. He's a mess. All right, so we have our seven quart jars here filled with our chicken legs and thighs. We actually just barely got all nine chickens worth of legs and thighs in these jars. We're gonna put just a little bit of salt, um, you don't need much. Salt is optional. Next step that we're gonna do here is wipe off the rims um, of the jars so that we can put the lids and rings on. Um, I like to use distilled white vinegar to wipe my rims with. Okay, so now we've got all of those wiped down really well, and then we will tighten down our rings, just finger tight. You don't want to go all Iron Man on them, you just need them. Need them finger tight, and we don't put any liquid in it doing raw pack. Um, you don't need any broth or water or anything like that. 
Okay, now they are ready to go into the canner. Okay, now we've got a couple of inches of water in the bottom of our canner. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a splash of vinegar. That just helps the, uh, the jars stay clear. And then we'll put our jars in. We want them to have a nice even spacing to not be touching each other. We're then gonna take a little bit of olive oil, wipe the rim of our canner, help it get a good seal. And this water in here is just cold water. We are bringing all of this up to temperature together. We're gonna put our lid on and lock it. We're not gonna put the weight on. And then we are going to bring this up to temperature until it is actively venting. For bone-in chicken, you want to go in quarts, you want to do an hour and 15 minutes at pressure. And for uh, meat-only, boneless chicken, you would do an hour 30 minutes. And above a thousand feet elevation, that's 15 pounds with the weighted gauge, which is what we have. So we have our gauge and our two extra weights. So 5, 10, and 15 pounds of weight, which will go on here, and that's when our time will start. Okay, so while we are waiting for the canner to uh, come up to temperature, we are going to be processing down the boneless meat. Here is our uh, boneless meat and this will go into the uh, refrigerator to cool for a little while before we try and run it through the uh, through the meat grinder. And just like that on cue, the port is steaming so we are going to place our weight. Alright, only a thousand things going on right now as we're cooking dinner, but we started wobbling, so I've lowered the temperature from a like high, medium, high to just above medium. And if that uh, dance starts to get a little bit too slow, then I'll turn it back up with just a touch. But now we can start our timer for 75 minutes, and we're off to the races. Get these guys out onto the counter where we will let them cool all night long. Alright, so when you pull the jars out of the counter, sometimes, like this one, you will still see some boiling, bubbling going on inside the can, and that is okay. We want to make sure that these get completely cooled down before we do any... Uh, major movement. All right, everybody, welcome to another morning here on the Dreamstead. Uh, from last night, our uh, canned chicken legs and thighs are nice and cool. We have then, after completely cooling overnight, we removed the rings and we cleaned up the jars. So now these are ready to go into storage. Look at that. It is beautiful. You got that nice. Uh, broth has a nice layer of, of fat up there has processed and rendered down a lot of the flavors out of that bone you can crack this open and just pull that meat apart pull it off the bone throw it right into whatever you want or you could throw it into a stew or a soup or something like that and make a really fast meal whereas you would normally have to process cook down that whole bird okay so awesome now on to today's project Alright, so we've got all of our boneless meat. Today we're going to be grinding this meat, making a ground chicken. So we've got our meat grinder all set up. We're just using our coarse grinding plate. First we will throw some of our chicken up onto our feeder plate. Just get ready to, ready to go here. And just 
just like that, we've gone through our first bowl. Let's get the rest of this done. Cutting it into these strips makes it really easy to feed into your grinder, feeding down the port. Um, and then once the grinder grabs onto that strip, then it's able to feed it through. So it takes very little, if any, pressure from your plunger. All right, we let it run until it was done there. And there we have it, two nice big bowls of ground chicken. All right, so what we're doing with this ground chicken is we're doing what's called a hot pack method. So uh, we cold packed the chicken legs and thighs meaning we put them in raw and cold into the jars and then we put them in the canner and they cooked in the canner and that's all that they cooked. This, we will be cooking the meat before we put it into the jars and then we will put the jars into the canner hot and then just bringing it back, bringing it up to that, that peak temperature that we need it at. We'll be doing a little bit of seasoning, but not much because we'll want to be able to season this differently as we bring out you know, as we bring it out of the jars later. We'll be canning this in pint jars. So we'll do an hour and 15 minutes at 15 pounds pressure. And unlike the cold pack method, you do put in water or broth with this method, and that has to be hot already, boiling. We'll let that cook. All right, so it's been a little while, 15, 20 minutes or so. We've got our ground chicken cooked up decently. Um, it's definitely not 100% cooked, but uh, for this canning method, that's not necessary. So <clears throat> really the big reason that you're cooking this before you put it into the jar is so that it keeps that texture and consistency. If you just put the ground chicken straight into the jar and then put broth in it and canned it, it would just be a solid lug of meat. We're cooking this up to keep that texture the way that we want it. Um, so same with like if you cut chicken breast into cubes and then you cold pack, uh, you cold can that, then when it comes out it'll just shred apart, which we love for putting into um, our pastas and stuff like that, into, into pasta sauces. Um, but if you want it to maintain its texture that it has when it's first cooked, then go ahead and cube it up and then cook it uh, to about 60 to 80 percent or whatever and then can it and it'll maintain its texture and stay in those cubes and uh, be more similar to what it was uh, if you just took fresh chicken and cooked it. And it cooks the rest of the way in the can so it's still okay to eat just straight away right out of the can. So we have our ground chicken that is cooked. Um, we did not season the ground chicken. We have our broth over here that is somewhat seasoned. And then we have our pressure canner back here that has just been under heat to uh, get it up to temperature. My pressure canner can only hold one layer of jars unless I'm using half pints. Uh, so pints and quarts, it can only hold one layer. So. Um, that's kind of a bummer, but that's, you know, that's what we're dealing with. I am hoping to eventually here get a, uh, a larger canner, a taller canner that will allow us to have two rows of pints so that we could do all of this meat at one time. Odds are we'll have to do it in two rounds. So we are ready to start putting the meat into the jars. We want to keep an inch headspace, so make sure you have your headspace gauge handy. We'll also need to get all the air bubbles out so we use the tongue depressor side of that as well. So we take our funnel and we put our ground meat in making sure to keep that one inch head space. There we go. Next. So I like to just do one step all at once. <clears throat> so I put all the meat in and then I'll go back through with a ladle and I'll put the broth in instead of switching back and forth. Okay, so next step is putting in the broth and again using our funnel, nice hot broth that we will fill to the one inch. 
Okay, now we will use our headspace gauge here and we will get rid of any bubbles. After you do this, you might have to add more broth. Okay, got my pressure canner moved over to the burner that I wanted on. And just like the last uh, round of canning we did, we'll wipe down all of these rims with a little bit of distilled white vinegar. These are hot jars right now, so you gotta be careful. Into the canner they go. And the lid goes on. Okay, we are now venting. Kinda hard to see. Um, but we will allow it to vent for 10 minutes. This helps to make sure that there's nice even temperatures in there so that when we place that weight on, it immediately gets a really nice seal. We have now been venting for 10 minutes, so we will go ahead and place our weight on. Um, just like yesterday, 15 pounds, 5, 10, 15. We place that on. very quickly we get a good seal okay we have begun the dance so just lowered the temperature down a little bit we will keep an eye on this we will start our timer now for a uh, one hour and 15 minutes okay it has been an hour and 15 minutes for the uh, for this pressure canner. Shut the fire off, and we don't do anything else. Talked about this with the, the canning of the quart jars yesterday, but for some reason the clips didn't record. So I just go through the whole decompression process right now with you. So you shut the fire off. You let this come down completely out of pressure. Um, if you had a gauge system, you would just wait until that gauge goes all the way down to zero. With this system, I have the, uh, the little pop uh, lock. So I gotta wait all the way until that pop lock goes down. And then I can remove the weight. And I wanna wait about 10 minutes. Um, and then I can remove the lid, and I'll wait another 10 minutes, and then I'll remove the jars. And that just gives it plenty of time to come back down out of pressure. Otherwise, the contents of the jar will expand in the jar and overflow the lids. Um, they'll still seal, but there's a chance that the seal will break eventually because stuff might get caught in the seal. We had some extra of the ground chicken which is fantastic because then I get to make some delicious some delicious taco meat. So we'll have some we'll have some chicken tacos for dinner tonight. Best part about that shh, best part about that is that uh, once these are canned I can just take the jar from the storage room downstairs I can bring it up and I can toss it in a pan and mix in some seasonings with it and make tacos. It only takes about five, ten minutes. This is awesome even, you know, for canning uh, ground beef or sausage or whatever. The only thing that you wouldn't be able to do is like ground venison uh, or like wild game. Just doesn't have enough fat in it. Okay, this one's been off for about 50 minutes. Um, so, as you can see, the, uh, the lock, the pressure lock, has gone down. So, I'm going to pull the weight off. No steam escaping. That's a good thing. With the weight off, we'll give it about 10 minutes, and then we'll go ahead and crack the lid. I want to make sure that when you take the lid off, you open it away from you, so that hopefully the steam doesn't get you in the face. And then we will let these sit for another five or so minutes okay been another few minutes let's get these guys out of here okay now as you can see they are still 
bubbling in there. Uh, so yeah, we'll let these sit for 12 hours and then we'll remove the rings, we'll clean them up and we'll take them down to the storage room. Um, so that's pretty much it for this video. We've taken last year's Corn's Cross broiler chickens. We have butchered them out and parted them out and we canned legs and thighs in quart jars and now we have ground up all of our the rest of our meat off the carcasses and canned them up in pints. And these are perfect, just straight out of the jar, good to go, good to eat. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video to be useful and informative. Um, once again, on the Dreamstead here, we do projects like this all the time. So if you're into this kind of thing, then consider subscribing here on the channel to be updated when we come out with new videos and more content for you guys. Thanks so much. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Make it a great day. Peace out.